Welcome back creative community. Once again, this is Lorenzo from the Coach MC studio. And in today's video, we'll talk about the importance of acting in English because English, it's a skill and a market in itself. It has become the key to open up the door to hundreds and thousands of job opportunities all over the globe. If you think about Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, if you think about HBO Max, all these media outlets out there producing English speaking content all over the world, not only restricted to the English speaking countries anymore, no, internationally. Enter entertainment industry has become a global market. They want your performance, your acting skills, your pronunciation, your passion. Why would you miss out on such an opportunity? There is no reason to do that because acting in English means taking part of great and new discoveries, new adventures, new projects, making money, meeting new friends, new artists, being challenged by different views, different perspectives, different scripts, different stories, creating new networks, being part of a global community that performs in English and also seeing yourself in the reflection and understanding what English can do to your system, how you can reflect on your native tongue, on how you perform, on how you usually do things in your native language, in the language that you usually speak in your region, in your niche, in your country, gives you also the ability to kind of switch and shift in between two languages, two polarities, understanding yourself as a performer and as an artist way better and way deeper. I've been the witness to the success of acting in English. Back then, 10 years ago, when we started the Coach MC Studio, it was all about helping Italian colleagues and fellow colleagues and actors out with their English pronunciation. Because so many projects that are from English speaking productions are being shot in Italy. So many international movies are being shot in Italy and Italian actors, they're not very acquainted with the English language. So I helped them out and this is how this whole endeavor started. And I witnessed myself how many self tips we nailed, how many auditions we booked, how many roles we got, how many new opportunities opportunities we gained through that experience and how many actors got into a completely different and a completely new market that they would never have dreamt of in the first place when they started the acting endeavor in their place, in their country, in their region, in their niche. Out of your niche, adding something to your toolbox, adding something to your portfolio, adding something to your consistency as an artist and challenging yourself of speaking a new language, of diving into different characters in a language that seems alien to you maybe at first glance. But with this video today, we want to make sure to give you all the tools that you need, all the foundations that you need. We will start with some fundamental tips and then in the following videos that Will come up in the next months we will go through all the various stages and all the very important things when it comes down to speaking and acting in English. So whether you are new to the game, whether you're starting out your career or you are a seasoned veteran enjoying your fair share amount of success already, this video is for you because whether you want to create right away from the start of your career a niche that will be profitable, that will hold many, many different opportunities and great discoveries and creating a network that's completely different to your local and regional network, or whether you're already like a seasoned actor that want to add something new, have new challenges, become greater and big in a process, learn something completely different and looking at your craft with experience from a point of view that is completely different would help you also to fortify and improve the old mindset, the old skill set and gaining a new one, a skill set that is truly universal and has become so fundamental to express yourself because hey, let's realize that that's a privilege to be able to express yourself, to have an artistic display of your abilities in another language. It's a great challenge. It's a beautiful way and a great privilege to have the opportunity to dive in into new pockets of creativity, explore yourself and become better and greater as an artist in the process. So that said, let's jump right into the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't so far and now we will see what's cooking. So you're getting your audition. You printed out everything, highlighted everything and you're not a native English speaker. And you need to approach the text coherently with your abilities, with your craft. At the same time, you need to pronounce and say things in a language that is usually not yours. It's kind of tricky. It's difficult. Let's admit that. Sure. And let's say you don't have a coach, which is kind of impossible. If you just call me, I'm there. So let's say there is no coach. There is no way of checking with somebody else if your pronunciation is, is correct, if your inflection is right, if, if, if you are sounding good or not, if it's crisp, if, you're, if your tone is right, if the resonance is right, if the rhythm is right, all these things, right? So you don't have anybody kind of to reflect with. There is nobody else there. It's just you, you and the lines, the sides, the text, the imaginary lives. What can we do? 10 little tips. Let's go. First of all, read the whole sentence. 
Usually when we are approaching a different language and we need to read like a longer sentence, what we do is kind of getting to the detail first before seeing the whole picture. That's a mistake. See the whole picture, see the whole sentence, the whole line. Take a holistic view about the first thing that you say because that's the impression, that's the first impression, your first expression that comes out of you. So it has to have like a holistic view, a sense of what's going on during the sentence that will make life easier for you to understand, to pronounce and to replicate it over and over and over again. If you start with reading only two words and then again one word and a little break again, that will kind of deconstruct the whole thing. It will not give you a truthful picture of how the whole sentence actually sounds, right? What kind of resonance, what kind of steam, what kind of ambition you have with that sentence. So read the whole sentence first. What does the sentence tell you? Translate it. What does it really mean? What is the underlying meaning? What kind of complicated words are in this sentence? You know, put them out, write them on an extra sheet of paper, analyze them correctly, separately. You know, all the syllables, what's going on with the vowels, with the consonants, what is so difficult for me interpreting this word in a different language that it seems so complicated at first sight? deconstruct it, make it easier for you, and then replace it, re-put it in into the context of the whole sentence, and then again, say the whole sentence again. And then you would see after a couple of minutes, wow, now I've got control. Now it sounds quite good. Now I can start to interpret, to put some art into the whole business, into the whole endeavor. Second tip, read the other sentence as well. If that's a dialogue, read the other sentence of the other character in the scene as well. So you understand the rhythm pattern, what's going on between you guys. Maybe get a little idea of the relationship, of the relationship of you both, right? Well, what is at stake? Where's the conflict? What are you playing for, right? You get that idea from reading the other sentence. Also, great way to exercise. Reading aloud is always great because it kind of gives you fluidity and that state where you start not thinking about too much about the pronunciation where it kind of becomes a give and take. You give, you take, you give, you take, you give, you take. So read your sentence and read the sentence of the other character as well and understand that sentence as well. Deconstruct it again, search for the complicated words, put them all together, put them in a context, read both sentences. Now you start to get a feel, a grip of the dialogue. You get power and steam behind the lines. You calm down a little bit and now the expression starts to unfold and to blossom up, which gives you, of course, more self-esteem because all of a sudden it's not about the right pronunciation, technically speaking correctly, but also to give, of course, your ability to play out what you got inside of yourself. Third tip, don't rush. Hmm. It's so difficult, I know. We get rushed throughout our lives. As soon as we step out or even in our own apartment, we get rushed by appointments, by dates, expiration dates, all these little things, right? Taxes, everybody wants to rush us, put us under pressure, everything is frenetic and gets faster and faster. When you are learning new lines, when you're approaching a new language and try to communicate in a different language, don't rush. Take your time, breathe out. How does it sound? Let the sound evolve. If our brain tries something new, then he wants to rush through. He doesn't want to admit mistakes or any failure, right? He's insecure, so he rushes through. He makes it slightly faster, so the whole thing, the whole process is finished. Ah, I've done it. That's the wrong process. That's a mechanical process. It has nothing to do with an artistic behavior, display of abilities and blossoming up and feeling what the lines, what the art is really telling us and giving that out to the audience so the audience is impressed by your expression. That's what this whole thing, the whole endeavor is about, so you don't need to rush. Enjoy it. Have fun. Play with the words. Say them singularly sometimes in the context of the sentence. Don't make any breaks. It's like exhaling and opening up a window very slowly. Get a great view of your environment while saying the lines constantly, like crossing the bridge. The bridge doesn't have any cracks, any, any curves. It's a, it's a straight line. It's connecting the vectors. My center line to your center line. My heart to your heart my mouth to your brain. You want a connection that is fast and direct. So breathe out, don't rush. Say the lines slowly, understand them, get a grip of the sound and understanding of the temperature, of the facets, of the nuances of the sound, of the vowels, of the consonant, how beautiful this new language is, how beautiful English is. This is your life, your expression, your ability. Don't rush, make it slow. You will see, you will make faster and faster progressions by the minute if you start slowly, if you don't rush. And look who's talking, right? Mr. <gasps> I rush all my life. But it's so fundamental. I've realized throughout my practice, if I don't rush in the beginning, it's like in martial arts, if I really get an understanding of how the muscles move, 
then I will perform my moves, my actions, my little sequences way faster afterwards and I will be way quicker and, and safer also in my expression. I will have way more power behind it because I understand fully how to perform the movement. In this case, I understand fully how to pronounce it, how to feel it and how to give steam behind the lines. Compassion. And of course, the understanding comes through that slow process because it kind of trickles through slowly. You can't pretend from your brain to understand anything, everything right away while you're picking up the lines because it's just not used to that language. It needs some time to trickle through, to kind of understand the conceptual meaning, where this whole thing leads to, understand through the other character, the other reflection, what this whole conversation, the dialogue, the conflict is about. And then of kind of you get an idea of, ah, this is the emotion I need to get behind these lines, you know, to express myself truthfully in that situation. That makes sense for my character. And at the same time, I'm pronouncing it clearly and crisp. Don't rush. Tip number four, errors are fundamental. They are super important. Make errors. And don't be afraid of the mistakes of the error because it just shows you where you need to improve, where you need to exercise a little more. It's like going to the gym. You will have some inconsistencies with some techniques and workouts and some other workouts will be easier because you have more muscles and you have more dexterity when you're performing a certain movement. The same thing is true for language. Some things are just hard to pronounce, hard to understand, hard to say. Some things are easier. Some things are emotionally wise closer to your system, to your core and are easier for you personally as an actor, as a performer to express it. Some things are a bit more alien to you, way more difficult to grasp in the beginning and also to express afterwards. So get acquainted with it and make errors, make mistakes, and try to understand why you do them. Don't be afraid of doing them. Don't be mad at yourself, upset of yourself. Again, put out the, the ego out of your system. Put the system out of your system, right? The system that is telling you how to work and to function all day. You know, the, the system wants you to repeat something, then you have to do it flawlessly right away. Otherwise, you're dumb and stupid and an idiot. That's not true. Sometimes we need more time to get things stratified, to get things down, down, down to the core. It's art. It's not mathematics. It's not just a formula. You need to explore it. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. Don't rush, like I said before, but make errors, make mistakes. And guess what? Some of those mistakes, they're easier to fix than you might think. Just put some music on, get around it with a rhythm, with some nice music, a music that maybe fits the situation. You know, say it while you're singing it, say it in a poem, say it while you're upside down, while you're exercising, while you're doing or performing some automatisms, while you're cooking, while you're cleaning up your house, whatever. You know, try to implement them in different situations. You will see that will come out of your system way easier. And they are not as hard as you might thought of in the beginning because, oh my God, it, it's, it's overwhelming. Of course, if you see, you know, many sides, let's say you have like an addition of six pages, six sides, in a different language, it has even like a monologue in the middle. Of course, that could be like whew, overwhelming at first sight. But then when you break it down and you make it easy for you and you follow through on these steps, you will see how kind of everything falls into place automatically. Because through the exercise, through that mechanical repetition in a way, your brain gets acquainted with the sound and repeating those sounds flawlessly over and over again will be easier for you over time. Once you do this properly and correctly. So understand why you did the mistake in the first place. And get around it with fun. Have fun in the process. This is expressing yourself. This is art. This is acting. You should have fun, right? Dopamine should rush through your system. This is great. This is a privilege that you have to express yourself in a different language, to get called to action for an audition for a project on the other side of the ocean. That's exciting news. Have fun in the process and try to show all of your abilities and give something in into that reading, into that pronunciation that belongs just to you. Don't be afraid to show it. Do some mistakes. That, that's great too. I mean, they don't look for native speakers, right? What they're looking for is for somebody who can express himself truthfully, realistically, with entertaining purposes in, in this other language, in this case, English. So it's just great to see that human condition as truthful, as realistic, and as authentic as possible. They just want human beings reacting truthfully to imaginary circumstances. Tip number five, all pros should be clear as possible. Be crisp, be like crystals, be like snow, be like a feather, be light and sharp as a ninja sword, right? Clear, clarity gives you power. When you are clear, when you're focused, when you're relaxed, you don't need to come up with a different game plan. You just need to express yourself. You are feeling the lines 
as clearly as possible, repeating them as clearly and crisp and sharp as possible. So the impact is hard and nice and full of tension and full of demeanor of behavior. If behavior is truthful, pronunciation is truthful because you're standing behind it. If it's just madness and gibberish, yeah, there's a lot of emotion going on, but I want the clearness. I want to understand what the character says. And even if you screw up some little words here and there, you have to think about the context that changes in a different language. Maybe just by adding one vowel, you, you change the implication of the word, the meaning of the word, and that changes the meaning of the line. And that kind of brings the whole thing to collapse. And you don't want that. So be clear, as clear as possible. You need to be more clear in English with that other language that you're trying to approach than in your mother tongue, because in your mother tongue, you know exactly how to repair, how to kind of, you know, compensate some little inconsistency, some little mistakes. But when you are pronouncing that new language, try to be as clear as possible so you are as truthful as possible. Because the clearer you understand the message and you, and you pronounce it, the better and the more truthful you can react. The, the faster the reaction process is, and consequentially, the whole thing becomes vivid, tangible, alive. Now understand the sparks, and they are coming up naturally. You don't need to create them or preconceive them. They are coming because your body, your system is truthfully reacting to the clear pronunciation because your brain knows much more than you might know. Your brain knows this is good. This is a good sound. It feels good. It emanates testosterone, dopamine, serotonin, all these beautiful molecules rushing through your system, through your blood, through your veins, animating you to give some more because now you're feeling the moment. So pronounce everything as clear as possible. That might seem like a contradiction to point number four, but it isn't. Errors are okay. No, don't get upset about your mistakes. They are part of learning. They are part of your system telling you what you need to dig into a little bit deeper and what you need to understand better. That's just your system telling you something. That's beautiful. Subconscious communication. Number five is about trying to aim at preciseness, at clarity, at a beautiful sound. It's something that comes across as vivid and human and natural and authentic as possible. That's what I'm talking about. Clearness impacts people. If you say few things with absolute clarity and focus and concentration and passion, that will hit and impact way more than a thousand things said in, in fast gibberish that is not understandable, not perceivable, and not truly correct and not completely correct. That will kind of confuse you more than lure you in and pull you in. If you say a few things with clarity and passion and a great demeanor and ambition, then that will pull the audience in way more than the whole lot of information that doesn't make any sense because it's just not understandable and perceivable. Have I made myself clear? Two thumbs up, not one, two thumbs up. Just to be clear, clearness. Show the algorithm what you like. Be clear about that. No doubts about that, right? Shed some light onto this channel. All right, tip number six. Sometimes it's hard when it comes down to big chunks of text to really have the right drive, the right rhythm to put the right steam behind it and understand everything clearly. Sometimes you got a lot of complicated words or sometimes you're paraphrasing or you're using metaphors that are not conventional or not used in your mother language. So you kind of uh, need some time to get really acquainted with what the character tries to say. But if you get too much into the detail of the phrase of the lines or of the monologue, you can lose you know, the gravity of the whole process of the whole organism that tries to kind of impress the audience and the other character in the scene. So try to get a grip, try to get a holistic view, a conceptual, what does this whole thing mean on a conceptual level? What is the conceptual meaning? What is the character trying to express, to say really? It's not really understanding the lines, it's like conceptually, where does he come from? Where does he want to go? What's the mission here for real, right? Sometimes when we have big chunks of text as a character, we don't mean everything we say. We use metaphors sometimes. We use deviations, analogies, and little stories, you know, metaphors to kind of demonstrate and illustrate what we're really intending to say. Maybe because we don't want to hurt the other character. Maybe because we don't know the other character. Maybe because we want to protect ourselves so we don't give out all the information. So we try to make it clear through a metaphor, through an analogy. And that is sometimes truly hard to understand because it's not our cultural background. It's not the way we express ourselves. So try to get a grip on the conceptual meaning. What does this line actually tell us, like on an emotional, deeper level? 
Where does this come from? What's the intention behind it? That helps tremendously to get the right boost and the right rhythm, you know, the, the right traction to the line because you can't break down everything just rationally when you observe the lines. You understand them logically and rationally, but sometimes they are out of context. And in order to get an idea of what the out of context metaphor is really aiming at, you need to understand it first like conceptually. So again, go through the reading process, listen to what the character responds, listen to the answer first to understand what you're saying in the first place. Try to get an idea how it impacts the other character and then reverse engineer the process and you might understand what you said in the first place. Ah, now I understand what the character really meant by saying it in this and that way. Right? Because sometimes they can get us out of the curve and, and slow down our pace and, and kind of break our rhythm where it's actually not necessary or even suitable to maintain a certain quality, a certain tension of output. To do that, get a grip, get an idea of the holistic view of the conceptual meaning of the lines. What does the character truly want? Number seven, the words. We will have a video dedicated just to the maybe two maybe three maybe a lot of videos just dedicated to the words because i love the words so much i'm in love with the words i love saying things in different ways i love to explore how many different emotions a word can contain where does this word come from what does it truly mean art is so many different things but poetry acting is based on a story right and storytelling comes from using the right words in the right moment. And the more understanding you have of the words, the better you can interpret the story, the better and faster and more dynamic can the story can be brought forward by your character. That is essential to great acting, understanding the words, falling in love with the words, expressing them as clearly as possible and truthfully and passionately as you can. Study the words, study where they come from, study what all the implications of these words actually mean, and you will get soaked in by the world of words, the world wide web, right? You get soaked in and pulled in by that singularity of the expression, of the meaning, of the essence of the word. And then you don't think about pronunciation anymore because you're in love with the word. Now it's the passion talking and not the rational mind. All of a sudden this becomes vivid, alive and truthful. Like I always say, I know I sound redundant, but I want to make this point clear. By repeating the things, by getting into darkness, right? By plunging in into all the ramifications. Of course, that's a lot of study, a lot of work. But you want to make a living out of acting. You want to enjoy all these different collaborations, all these different projects. You want to get hired for big projects, right? Big projects, they cost a lot of money. They need to trust you that their money is well invested. If you invest in yourself a lot, they will invest in yourself a lot. If you don't do that, they won't do that. Because they will see, hmm, hmm, ah, nah. All right? Invest. Learn the words. Learn what they mean. Learn the steam behind the meaning. What they really give to your system. Tip number eight. Trust your instincts. When you're approaching a new language, sometimes we get... Uh, too much in our head, right? We, we're stuck in our head. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this right? Is this wrong? Oh, this sounds terrible. Ah! They don't want any master. They don't want any speech professor, any, any, any language professor. When it comes down to audition, it comes down to performing, to be great, to, to have fun, to show your abilities, your dexterity, aiming at perfection. And then if we're just slightly below perfection, that's fine as well. Perfection is not possible. But if our stakes are high, then we learn a lot because we pressurize our brain in a healthy way to absorb as much as you can. That absorbing process will enrich in your system. Consequently, it, you become a way more vivid and skillful actor. So it's not about being perfect, right? And, and having everything figured out by the first video. No, it's about the process and having fun and enjoying that process. And enjoying means that you have to trust your instincts. You can't always predict how things will go. Sometimes you slip up, sometimes you make a mistake, sometimes you get distracted, sometimes it's just perfect, and then it kind of lacks the passion. You know, there are certain ways of expressing certain things, and it's your way we're searching for, we're looking for, it's your way of saying things, of interpreting the imaginary life and having fun with another language. So trust your instincts that you are pronouncing things right. They're coming from your system. Your brain is smarter than you will admit. It knows things that you don't know actively, even if that sounds weird. 
So trust your instincts. Let your brain guide you sometimes to do the things automatically. Don't try to superimpose your intellect or intervene right away or correct mistakes that you think are mistakes and then in the end they turn out to be perfectly fine. Trust your instincts. You are not making as many mistakes as you might think. You might be way better in your initial pronunciation than you might think. And actually that's true for almost everything. If we start art, in the beginning we're great because we're not thinking that much. If we start to paint or you know, modeling or sculpturing. In the beginning, we're actually pretty good doing that because we're not thinking too much. Then the knowledge kicks in and all the things that we need to take into account, different instruments, and then we're starting over rationalizing the process. And then actually there is a stagnant phase where it actually doesn't evolve that much. And then all of a sudden, boom, the hockey stick, the hockey stick is, is picking up again. So trust your instincts that on your first reading, while you're approaching the lines for the first time, while you're saying them for the first time, that your emotions and the way you're pronouncing things and how you approach the lines, they will pretty much be on spot. So even if you don't have that much time to prepare your self-tape audition, trust your instincts that you will do a great job. It's not about, like again, being this professor and outstanding with that language. It's about expressing yourself and manifesting everything that you got inside of yourself. So trust your instincts that they will guide you, they will lead you. You know, they, you're, you're learning and you're rehearsing and you're refurbishing for a reason. It's in your system. Trust your instincts and your system that it's placed in there. You can't always pretend from your system that it will explain to you everything in advance so you are safe and comfortable and you're just playing out. Sometimes you have to, you know, take that leap of faith. You know, having the attitude, the inner tendency that you're willing to take the challenge. Great things will always come when you step in into a territory that is new to you, where you don't feel completely comfortable with the environment and where you're going to, right? This is where your system is on high alert, where all your senses are awakened all of a sudden, right? They are very perceptive and very reactive because they don't know what's going on. So trust your instincts that they will guide you through this, that you have a great first approach. That's why you're learning. That's why you're doing all these things. When we're talking about instincts, people have the tendency to think, wow, that's new age stuff, right? I, I can break down everything and, and rationally kind of display it and then control it and then I can do this and do that and then I will have that and that outcome. To a certain extent, that's true. But sometimes what we have to tell instinct-wise is way more important than what our brain can tell. We have so much knowledge, but then in the end, it's just important that we, we, we delight people. And that sometimes can be in a very stupid way. If you think about Jerry Lewis, a very quick analysis of his body demeanor, of his physicality will tell you that there was no rationality. There was just instinct. There was just following his passion and just doing quirky and crazy, outstanding, amazing things with his physicality and move in a way that at that time, nobody was moving like him. Nobody was saying things in a way he said it, and he was trusting his instincts that he would do right, that he would, would have success with this way of displaying his abilities. Even though it was unheard of back in the days, nobody had seen anything like that. So trust your instincts that you have the right approach to it. And then structurize it. Then put yourself into the position where you can correct things. But your perspective on how you want to play a different character on an imaginary life that comes from the attitude that you have, the tendency that you have to accept that challenge, to be courageous and go into a direction where you don't fully know what's going on and then let your system react to it naturally because that's what we want to see in front of the camera, that natural crisp reaction that is surprising to us as an audience because it surprises you in the first place. Maturity and wisdom comes afterwards. After you're leaving the room, after you wrap your cell tape, and then you, maybe you watch it in a couple of days, and then you reflect on it and say, oh, I could have done this and that better. But in that moment, you just, you just made a decision. You just trusted your attitude that you are willing to discover everything that's behind that closed door and not having full knowledge first what's behind that closed door and then open it up because by then the whole experience is over. You've over-rationalized the whole process. It's not natural anymore. It's not fun anymore. It's not entertaining anymore. It's not compelling. Your body language is way more important than what you say. Your body will react naturally and realistically if you trust your instincts and you go into that direction where it kind of challenges your whole system and not where you have everything mapped out and figured out beforehand. It's not challenging anymore. It's not interesting anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's not an adventure anymore. It needs still to be slightly dangerous, like an adventure. It's your attitude. Like Indiana Jones, 
he wasn't always aware where he was going to, right? And what kind of trouble he was putting himself into when he was accepting all these different quests and challenges, right? And all these different adventures. But it was his attitude that was so positive. It was his attitude of trying and not giving up and being resilient, even if there are some backlashes and some, some disappointments and some little failures. Even if you have to lose something in the process, you still keep going on. What will you do? against somebody who just will not give up. What will you do? There is nothing you can do. Trust your instincts. Don't give up. Put yourself into that character. Put yourself into that position. React to that. Speak out loud. See where it takes you. Surprise yourself. Then you will surprise others. And then you have a magnificent performance. And here's the bonus tip. Well, that would be nine tips. All right, two bonus tips. I'm so generous. Two bonus tips. 10 tips in one video. Oh my God. Bonus tip number one is translate, emulate, transform the lines and morph them into a song. Yes, you heard me right. Put the lines out of the lines, place them on a new sheet of paper and make them like a song. Like sing them completely, all of them. You know, if your whole set of lines for the audition would be a song and just perform them while singing. Why? First of all, it's fun. Second of all, it loosens you up. You get a new perspective. You get, you know, you step a little bit aside from the whole thing and you don't see the whole pyramid anymore. Now you see the fun and how you can deconstruct it for yourself and how you can put the lines into certain segments of rhythm, of melody, of harmony. And so you have a way better idea on where to transition from one emotion to the next emotion and how to put everything into a context of where you're actually telling a story. Because never forget, all these things that I said, they are not taking into account that and in the end, right, we have a story to tell and that is always based on the same principles. We as heroes in the story, we start somewhere and we have the desire for something. And then we start with our quest, then obstacles will come our way. We get across and around these obstacles, we will fight our enemy. And so we ask many, many questions and in the end we have reached the cathartic experience. Now we have the transformation. It's always the same. And sometimes when you're starting with a new language, you kind of lose the sense of like really telling the story, really telling the arc, because you're so preoccupied with your spelling, with your pronunciation, which is legitimate. But always keep that in mind. What can help you to perform the arc flawlessly, the story arc flawlessly, so you are placed in these sections flawlessly, of course, music. So transform your lines into the song. Transform your lines into poetry, transform your lines into something else, you get a new look at it, you will feel way more released by the pressure of pronouncing them right, you, now you can play and manipulate with them way easier and becomes more fun and process for your brain. It's great because it's not so preoccupied with the pronunciation that that is a stiff and very dry process that our brain doesn't actually like, right, to get corrected all the time. And now all of a sudden we find a very playful approach to get around that reptilian center, that boring guardian of where the information goes and if it gets truncated or not. This way you get a, a nice and easy access to your brain, to your system. You get around the obstacles and the problems in a playful, very melodic way, and it's fun to perform, and you get a new idea, a new notion, a new colorful, emotional quality and flavor of what the lines are actually meaning and what the arc, the overarching arc of the story of your character actually proposes to the audience. Tip number two. What is tip number two? Tip Bonus tip number two. How can I get access to these international productions? How can I be part of an English speaking production? How can I play in English? How can I act in English? Where do people perceive me on those various platforms if I haven't done anything in English so far? If I have none whatsoever material in English to this day, what can I do to get into these productions and start acting in English? Well, first of all, you can contact me. It's the coachmc.studio. Just jump to my website, get a free trial lesson, like a 30 minute kind of knowing each other session where we get to know each other, if we are a good match for each other, if we can collaborate, if there are some common interests, if I can do something for you and maybe you can do something for me. <laughs> and then let's get an English monologue. Let's break it down. Let's work on it. We do some hardcore online sessions. We will figure out everything about the pronunciation, about the character, about the artistic display, about the right sound, the resonance, how it will impact the audience, and then we will record it. 
and then you have your first piece of information in English, your first piece of material in English, and then you can send it out to the various agencies, upload it on those various casting networks, servers, and all the great possibilities out there, all the various platforms, and so people will start noticing that you are acting in English too. And maybe you get contacted or called in by Cast Forward, Italent, and all these various resources out there. Sounds like a plan, right? Let's do it then. What you're waiting for. Okay, guys, I guess that's it. It's just the starting video for a longer series acting in English for beginners, but maybe also for the ones who are already acting in English, whether that's like, uh, like a very advanced speaker, or if you are a native speaker, like a native English speaker, and you want to improve your delivery, you want to refurbish a few fundamental things that you haven't looked at for a longer period of time. Well, I'm your man as well. This video could help you out as well. It's always refreshing. It's always a great experience to go back to basics, to go back to the fundamentals and rediscover yourself and get a new perspective on things that you thought are already part of your toolbox, already part of your craftsmanship. Maybe there is space to improve even more, to do few things, uh, you know, a couple of things better with our delivery, whether it's the pointiness, the preciseness, the, the sharpness when you're pronouncing, whatever it is. So maybe this video is also made for you, for me, for the universe. Thank you so much, guys. I guess now this video is complete. If you have any further questions, any remarks, any comments, please place them down in the comment section below. You know, type something in, something nice. Write me a letter. Yeah, right. If you want, you can do it handwritten and then I will take a picture of it and then post it in the comment section because nobody writes uh, handwritten letters anymore. But, you know, seriously, just, you know, type something in. Let me know what you got on your mind. DM me on Instagram. It's the Coach MC and follow my adventures there too. Got some more art involved there. Subscribe to this channel. Activate the bell so you get notified. Yeah, smash it. You know, join the notification squad. We're there for you. I want to help you getting better, performing better, having more success, earning more money. See you next time, guys. This video is completed and now you're ready to perform.